Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I want to walk you through the Photoshop compositing workflow. In a recent online meetup with my Nuclei Academy members, I did a walkthrough of the compositing workflow, and I want to share this portion of the meetup with you. Now, I do use some images in the uh, composite. If you want to download those, I have included a link to them in the description of this video. So go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. There's basically four steps that you're going to do when it comes to compositing. And, and this is after you've found your images. But these four steps are what you're just going to repeat for each element of your photo. Um, and that is the simplicity of compositing. So the first step is selection. And here what we'll do is we'll just combine these two images that I downloaded from Unsplash. And we'll just put this elephant in the middle of this city here. So the first step is selection and mass. And that's basically cutting out your subject from its existing background. So the best steps, the best uh, tools for that are really the smart tools. Those are the ones that I use 95% of the time now just because they've gotten so good. So here we'll just do a select subject. <coughs> and now we've cut out the elephant. It's done an amazing job there. And we can do Command C. And then we can do Command V and paste that in. Now, if you're kind of newer to uh, compositing, one thing that you can do as well, let's go ahead and make a copy of this. And I'm going to put a mask on rather than cutting it out. And then I'm going to pull this in with the mask. Now, if I turn off this, meaning turn off my mask by holding shift and clicking on it, I can see where the horizon line is on this photo and match it up with this photo. So I could do this kind of help in terms of where that would be. Now for this photo, because his feet are all really close together, I can get away with um, cheating the horizon line. But if it was a car or something that had longer and more dimension to the bottom, this would become more important. But for this image, I can probably get away with moving him up a little bit cheating the horizon line a little. So let's put them right there. Okay, and then the next step is, so first step is selection and masking to get rid of whatever existing background you have. Then your next uh, step, which is step two, is placement, which is what we just did. And there really, you're just gonna be using free transform and making him bigger, smaller, uh, moving him up or down to put him into your scene. Now, depending on how big we want this elephant to look in our scene, we might make him smaller, bigger. If we want him further into our scene, we would make him smaller. And, you know, there he's kind of walking between the buildings. Um, if we make him bigger, he's walked, he's walking in the middle of the street. So depending on where you want him, this is where you're going to do the placement step. For this, let's kind of make him pretty big and we'll put him there. Okay, then the next step is matching your lighting and your color. And a lot of people miss out on this step. So here, someone might think, oh, well, these these look pretty good, but really they don't because if we look at our elephant, you can see that this has much more yellow lighting to it. He's also being surrounded by green and that's going to be reflecting back onto him. So what we want to do is we want to match the lighting as best as we can. So my favorite tool is curves, as you guys probably already know. So I'm going to put a curve uh, adjustment layer here. Whoops. Curve. There you go. And then I'm going to clip it so that it only applies to the elephant there. And here 
will start adjusting it. So the first thing I would do is he just looks too yellow for this scene. So I would go to my blues. If you look at your color wheel, the opposite of blue is yellow. So of these three channels, blue is going to have the biggest effect on yellow. So we'll take that and just start bringing this up a bit to get rid of some of that yellow. And then maybe go to the RGB and make him the whole thing a little bit lighter as well. Maybe something like that. And then if we look here, um, look at some of our neutrals here, they have a little bit of a cyan cast to them. You can kind of see that here and also in the ground here. So I want that cyan cast on my elephant as well. So if we look, the opposite of red is cyan. So let's go to our red channel and just pull that down a little bit. And you can see there how much more he's starting to feel like he belongs in this. I think I, I went overboard on the blue a little bit, so maybe to there. But here you can see a before and after. And just that one step, I would say, is the most important when it comes to matching up various elements together. You really can't skip on this step if you want your composite to look realistic. So there we've now done that. The other thing I might do is just have um, a little bit more light kind of hitting back up on his foot here because you can see there is light reflecting on the ground. So let's just add one more layer. I'm going to clip it again and we'll call this reflected light. And I'm just going to take a soft brush, select the ground color here. Just do that and put this on screen and take it down. So something like that. Pretty subtle, but it just helps blend him into the scene. Okay, and then finally we have blending and effects. So blending and effects is anything you can do to make him feel more like he belongs into the scene. So this is where you might add shadows, you might add some intentional highlights. Um, you can also add like dust, things in the foreground, anything to make him feel more like he belongs in the environment. So in this case, really, I think we would want to add a shadow to the ground below him. So let's go under here and let's start painting a little bit of a shadow. Now, directly where he is, directly below him, you would have a pretty strong shadow. And then let's do, whoops. But that's just where his foot is meeting the ground there. And then we would probably have a softer shadow around here. So maybe we'll do a softer shadow like this. And for this, I'll just do a solid color black. And then go to my properties for my mask and just add a feather to that until we really don't see it much anymore. Something like that. One other thing you have to be careful of is see that little halo there. You really want to make sure you don't have one of those. So that's on the elephant layer. I'm going to add one more and we'll call this foot shadow. We'll just add kind of a dark color there. and just paint out that little halo there. Kind of the most important spots when you're compositing is where your element touches the ground because that's gonna, you know, sell the illusion of he's actually in this space. So something like that, um, probably even make this a little bit smaller. 
And then our final step, and this is optional, but uh, something that I really like to do is kind of those final things to make everything feel like it was taken with the same camera. So there is um, adding a color grade, maybe adding some film grain over the whole thing so that you have, and this is important if you're using photos that have different film grain on them, by adding one film grain, film grain on top of the whole thing, you're kind of tricking, you know, basically selling the illusion that this was all taken with one camera. So what we can do here is we'll add a film grain layer. And that you just want to fill that with a 50% gray. Oops. So we'll zero this out, zero this out and then make that 50. And the reason we're doing 50% gray is when you use any of these overlay uh, layers, 50% gray disappears. So we're going to put this on linear light. And then if we go to filter noise, add noise, you can see that that's adding a film grain on top of the whole image. This is way too strong. Let's try it on like number two. And even that might be too strong. So we could take it down by taking down the fill to maybe 50. And there you can see we now have, and this is super subtle, but we have the same film grain here as here. And that's going to help sell the illusion that this was all taken with one camera. And then the next thing we'll do is a few other things just to kind of make the whole image sing a little bit. One is we could add a little blooming to our yellow lights. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to go do this simple way by just doing a radial gradient, kind of selecting this orange color. and then blooming those lights a bit. And then I'll put this on screen. And then we probably want to bloom this a little bit too. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to do a quick selection and make sure it's sampling all layers. That way I can just select this light part of the sky there. I'm going to make this under the film grain. Add a little white layer there and then just blur that white layer. And again, this will just bloom the sky. And because the bloom is happening on top of the elephant and the background buildings, again, you're just helping sell the illusion that this elephant is in this scene. And these are kind of like the small things you can do that'll help sell the big illusion. So something like that, we'll just set that to 40. And then finally, I'm gonna just add a color gradient to the whole thing. Again, this is one of these things that really helps sell the illusion because now the shadows and the highlights on both your subject and your background all have the same color tint. So an easy one is adding a curve layer and going to your blue and just bringing up the bottom a bit. That'll kind of add some blue into all your blacks and then bringing down the top. That'll add a bit of yellow into all your um, highlights. And then we can maybe even add just a little bit of an S curve here. So there you have it. That is a very quick composite. Um, and you can see those are the basic steps. So again, first cutting it out of whatever your subject is, cutting it out of its existing background, two, placing it and sizing it in your new environment, three, matching the color and the lighting, and then four, adding things on top, blending effects, shadows, little highlights, color blooms, things like that, and a color grade to make it all feel like it belongs together.
So there you have it. That is a walkthrough of the compositing workflow in Photoshop. And hopefully through this, you learn some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, this is just a small segment of my full one hour online live meetup that I do with Nuclear Academy members two to three times a month. And in these, we deep dive into various parts of Photoshop. We do critiques as well as Q and A's, uh, go through your, your composites and ways that you can improve them. Now, if you're interested in joining the Nuclear Academy, which also gives you all access to all of my courses and my professional presets, tools, and assets for Photoshop, I have included a link where you can find out more in the description of this video. We are opening for registration on August 16th. So get on the wait list if you want to join up there. Otherwise, please subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, leave a like, share this video, turn on your notifications, and here are some other tutorials that you can check out. I'll see you next time.